This is my Asus RTX 3060 Ti Mini V2, a tiny GPU that I bought for a specific project, which initially was meant to be using my 3060 Vision water cooled, but in the end it did not turn out the way I, uh, I wanted it to, and it was a uh, horrific experience. Ah! Fast forward a couple of months and we have still not finished the project. I am still trying to somehow fit a completely water-cooled build into the uh, Laser 3D LZX8 case. No progress there, but I want to do some progress. So here comes in my Asus Mini V2 GPU. And this is also the point where Big T comes in because they were generous enough to help us out on this whole thing. And something that is really interesting is that they send us their AS3060 Dual X water block, which not only fits on the 3060 just dual, but also onto this Asus RTX 3060 Ti Dual Mini, because it's it's basically the same GPU, it's just a Ti. I, I don't know, it fits. Let's water cool it. Okay, before we take apart the GPU, let's take a look what we have inside. Of course, we got the usual backplate, because that's mandatory nowadays. And we have the water block itself. Uh, what I've got here today is the RGB version. So we this whole thing will end up with an RGB cable, which is not actually RGB, but some proprietary stuff, which we can adapt to. Ta-da! 3-pin RGB. Um, we will have a look at the end of the video how this actually turns out, but I expect it to be the same like any other Bixky box. Then we have a non-existent manual, which is basically just a QR code to get to the website, where we will not find the manual, that's a complicated issue. I will now show on the screen how to get to the manual, because that's not a very pleasant experience. Then we have something like a product qualification certificate, okay, that's necessary. Uh, the first important thing, we have uh, thermal pads, that's something that we need, and we have a bag full of screws screws and a screwdriver. Something interesting to note here is that for some reason there is no thermal paste included nor is there that uh, that little oh, spachtel. Really? Spatula. That doesn't spatula, that does no, okay, okay. Nor is there that little spatula included to uh, scrape some of the, the thermal paste all over the die. I don't know why, it's... This is everything I've got in the box. It's quite unfortunate, but I got a bit of uh, Arctic MX4 left, so I will put this on there. That should be alright. Okay, let's begin by disassembling my GPU. Okay, so removing the whole cooling block of a 3060 uh, Dual Mini or a 3060Ti Mini V2 is fairly easy. The first step would be just to remove the heatsink part, so we need to unscrew the four middle screws here, which are keeping everything together. And then we need to remove these two here, which are just keeping the rest of the card attached to the whole heatsink area. Now give it a little wiggle, left and right, a couple of times, and slowly, slowly pry off the PCB, very slowly. Ta-da! And here we have it, a removed heatsink. Now let's take off the back plate, which is still attached to it, and this one is held by four screws. One, two, three, four. Five, by five screws. Okay, yeah, and it comes off. So here we have it, a clean card, no heatsink, no backplate, nothing left there. So now the next step would be to clean that die here from any leftover uh, thermal paste. So take your isopropyl alcohol. And let's begin. Oh yes, we are going to do this many times. Oh 
Okay, now with the GPU as clean as I can possibly get it, it's time to put on the thermal pads. For this we will consult the non-existent manual that I will put on, on the screen. And uh, yeah, basically the only areas that we need to put pads on are these two chips, these three here and these three here, followed by these three here and these three here. Sounds fairly easy, so we just take the strips, we measure it, plus minus, yeah that's close enough. Okay, now the last step would be to put on some thermal paste on the die before you proceed to install the water block. And usually this would be the moment where we use that spatula and we spread it around, but we don't have one. Uh, and honestly I don't, I don't think I have one either. So what I'm going to do and what you can do in this situation is to try and, and create as many little points of thermal paste as physically possible and spread it a bit just with your tube. I mean, this is not perfect, 100% not, but what you're gonna do, just try to cover as much as you can. That's like the only thing I can tell you. Seems a bit excessive, but it will work. Okay, so now we can proceed by finally installing the water block. And installing Bixky water blocks is surprisingly easy. The, the manual basically shows you where you have to put those four screws and it's really not that complicated. First off we need to put the whole block in position so we somewhat align the four screws here to the four screws here. We position one on top of the other Then we rotate the whole thing, we keep it in hand like this, and we proceed by putting those washers on there. Followed by four of these springy screws. Now for the springy screws it's exactly as with any other uh, chip cooler, like a CPU cooler you would do. Do them in, in cross and then don't tight them up completely, just do one or two rounds so that it sticks to the, to the thread and then proceed with the next one in a cross pattern so that you can evenly mount everything down. Okay, now all four of them are hanging a bit on the thread so now I can proceed by tightening up one by one bit by bit until every screw is tidy. Okay now before we proceed with anything we need to position the back plate and now we can mount the five leftover screws using the screws in the other bag. Ta-da! Watercool 3060 Ti. That was fairly easy. I I have to be honest, I really grew to like Bixby as, as a company. Everything feels sturdy, It is the quality is very much alright, and, and even though the manual is missing and, and I had no thermal paste included in the box and, and little gimmicks like that, but overall the products are always, uh, always of a higher quality, I really have to say that, and they are surprisingly easy to assemble uh, compared to many other water blocks I have seen so far. Now before I end anything I wanted to try the RGB if I can find my power supply. RGB. It looks nice. Of course Bixky also includes two little fittings to close up one side of the, of the water block because otherwise you would have a big problem. But the one thing I really have to critique is that for some reason there was no uh, thermal paste included. 
uh, on the spatula, I'm okay, <laughs> I don't really need it, but the thermal paste would be very much appreciated and needed. And of course, I mean, I printed out this manual just to be sure where to put the, the thermal pads on, and I think this is something they could include. They can just leave this out and put this in. Uh, that would make so much more sense. <laughs> But okay, so this was uh, water cooling a ASUS 3060Ti Dual Mini V2, which is identical to a ASUS RDX 3060 Dual, no Mini, using a big ski water block called NAS 3060 Dual X. And that's the reason why this is a bit weird, because it says 3060 and this is a 3060Ti, but it works, it's the same PCB. Okay, it was a very easy uh, easy thing. If you wanted to redo it, I mean, it took like, what, 10 minutes? That's really very much all right. And okay, for the five people who are really doing this to their cards, uh, I hope this was somewhat helpful to you. Okay, so now I will take the call and proceed with attempt number five, I guess, to water cool the Elderix 8 case. It's... it... it the project is on, still ongoing. I don't know, I'm, I'm unable to just admit defeat. I, I won't admit defeat. I will do this now. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.